We are entering an era of upheaval that some are calling the fourth industrial revolution. The rise of AI, and in particular generative art, threatens to upend our social and cultural landscape, leading to a renewed conflict between mechanical technique, art, and culture. While some people in the technology field are already proclaiming the end of art or the death of art, others are proclaiming a renewed dedication to the humanistic spirit of artistic production. Walter Benjamin argued that mechanical reproduction caused art to lose its aura, its unique and authentic presence. Today, artistic automation threatens to cause art to lose its very humanity. Unlike prior technologies, AI does not place humans in the driver's seat of the creative process. It removes them entirely. The artist does not use their hands or eyes to sculpt a scene before them, but merely a sentence, phrase, or a series of disparate words. By demoting the artist from imaginative creator to prompt engineer, AI transforms the artist from the originator of the image to a cog in the machine of prior images. The artist does not imagine the world. It is imagined for them by the algorithm. AI content can here be distinguished from real art. Where art seeks to enrich, content only ever seeks to sell. It is a bland and homogenizing force which gobbles up everything in its path. Art, photography, the spoken voice, the written word. It transforms images into transactional media akin to adverts, making noise without purpose, reworking old ideas. Content is not about the individual artist's vision for the work, but about reflecting the collective hive mind's desire, what people engage with most. More about the audience than the artist more about collage and pastiche than originality. It mimics successful other content rather than resting on its own. It creates no emotional reaction beyond a simplistic wow, mirroring the aesthetic reaction to the kitsch or the smooth aesthetic quality of a Jeff Koons artwork. It has no edges or negativity, and it dwells in the realm of narcissistic self-reflection via hyper-personalization. There is no other in content, only reflections of the past and the self. This is how Byung Chul Han writes of Jeff Koons. Jeff Koons, right now, the world's most successful architect, is a master of slick surfaces. In Koons, there is no disaster, no carnage, no breakage, no cracks, and no seams either. Everything just flows in smooth and sleek transitions. Everything is rounded, polished, shined. The art of Jeff Koons is an art of shined surfaces. There is nothing in it to interpret, decipher, or think out. It is an art of the like. Kuhn says that all the viewers of his work has to do is say, Wow. AI is the new king of content town. Instead of upending the digital age, AI is actually retrenching its contours with the business imperative of new art transformed to the new technological medium. The AI art generator takes seconds to create an image, making it the perfect artistic pursuit for someone with no time. The stressed out, bored, burnt out office worker can generate hundreds of images in their lunch break, ticking the box of being creative for that day without ever having to undergo the interrogation of their working life necessary to commit to actual art. Here, AI art is revealed as the symbol of corporate power, the realization of the corporate dream that all art can become content and that every image can become a sale, that every artist can be pacified and that every employee ultimately can be controlled. When art becomes content, life becomes the carnival as we learn to perceive reality in terms of theatrics and surprise. Baudrillard 
elucidates the beginning of this shift from art to content at the start of the postmodern age. With an ever-increasing consumeristic society, everything had to be turned into a sign, image, or symbol for profit exploitation. This created what he calls a materialization of aesthetics, accompanied by a desperate attempt to simulate art, to replicate and mix previous artistic styles, and to produce ever more images. Mark Fisher extends this idea by suggesting we are in the hauntology phase of cultural development, where we are trapped in the aesthetics of the past, with no new ideas or movements to speak of. No matter how many new images are created, without new imagining, we cannot conceive of future societies radically different to our own. In other words, our imagination has become captured by the data set. AI art is the logical endpoint of ontology, a time where art becomes a mere symbol or simulation of prior art alone. The AI artist generates something in the style of Picasso or Rembrandt, attempting to bring back the dead, but in the process only kills off her own creativity. Artists now embody the character of Neo from The Matrix, trapped in a world of their own creation, or rather their own generation, listless amidst the sea of information, staring into a mirror that can only show them the past. The AI artist uses words in the vain hope that the machine will know what she is thinking, or contain enough dead artists to fulfill her imaginative request. Eventually, even living artists become dead in the jaws of the machine, swallowed by the data set to be Frankensteined at will into something new, like a baby stitched together out of the parts of old men. I call this the necrotic fantasy of AI art, where a dead artist is used to keep alive the living, where art is said to give life, or at least a purpose to live for. For example, when Microsoft unveiled the next Rembrandt in Amsterdam, they did not seek out a new talented Dutch artist that could be compared to the Rembrandt of old. No, instead they used machine learning to study the old master's paintings, to replicate them anew. The commercialization of AI generators means that now anyone can do this. But to say that anyone can be the next Rembrandt is the same thing as saying no one can be the next Rembrandt. To be stuck in the style and hauntology of the past is to admit that the future is dead, that no new movements, talents, or geniuses can ever emerge. Emmanuel Flores, technical architect of Microsoft's next Rembrandt project, stated at the time, Rembrandt was my wife. I was living with him. This is the necrotic fantasy to bring back the dead made real, to reduce famous artists into data, to hack the brains of genius artists to live alongside us again. There's something deeply insulting about this, though, uh, particularly to new artists. The idea that a company would rather resurrect the dead rather than bothering to find someone new to talk about. This is in part because content cares less about the person than the corporate message. The gimmick of the next Rembrandt is the point of the next Rembrandt. Gimmick is no longer a side effect or the result of the advertising campaign. The artwork is the gimmick. The gimmick is the entire point of the exercise. Quote, like many of the Dutch master's own pieces of work, the next Rembrandt painting invokes a deep emotional response, drawing you in with his expressive features, in particular his eyes, and making you wonder who is the man in the, in the painting. The truth is, he doesn't exist, never has. 
this beautiful painting is 3D printed and the result of analyzing data from Rembrandt's work. Historically, artistic movements required a fundamental break from the art of the past, rather than a continuation of new collages or old images regurgitated. The Impressionists created hazy, dreamlike scenes, radically different from traditional painting. Cubists transformed the canvas into abstract shape. Digital art opened mixed mediums that challenged artistic convention. Artistic movements solidified over time due to the cultural context in which they arose, but also due to the individual lives of the artists, whose pains, joys, and dreams created the break effect from the past, rejecting old symbols, methods, and techniques that no longer represented them or their time. I've seen a lot of my friends just suffering because their work is so prominent and they've struggled for 10 years or more trying to get their style just to see someone else parading, wearing their face and parading it, right? There is nothing stopping ad companies from taking whatever you own from the internet, downloading it and putting it into their training model. Nothing, really. We're putting the whole creative future of humanity at risk here. The artist who is forced to become a prompt engineer loses everything that it means to be an artist. Their style, their creative process, their sense of play, their ownership and authorship of the work, their copyright, and everything else. They are haunted by the artists of the past, who appear in their latest works as dead mummies raising their hand. One artist writes on Reddit, I lost everything that made me love my job through mid-journey overnight. I am not an artist anymore. All I do is prompting. Expressing anger at the company's cost cutting, the artist goes on to deplore the state of AI art, which forced them to live off the art of others. I don't want to make art that is the result of scraped internet content from artists that were not asked. Finally, AI art can act as a mirror of its subject through its data set. The mirror reflects society, including the biases inherent in the data, along with the artist who prompts the generator. Prior art was criticized as being a mere mirror of society too, but AI exceeds prior art in this capacity in every measure. Emerson, for example, asks us to imagine an artist carrying a mirror through the street, ready to render an image of every created thing in her path. At first, when we see the mirror, we might be amazed by how the artist has recreated her surroundings in such amazing detail. Then we get disappointed, realizing that the image is merely a reflection of the world, an imitation of reality rather than reality itself. The person looking back at us in the mirror is not some new being, it's us. The Greek myth of Narcissus tells of how Narcissus fell in love with his own reflection because he imbued it with life, believing it to be real. In the same way, we risk falling for the mirror of AI art. We may one day even come to prefer it, believing that the hyper-reality of generated art is more exciting than the desert of the real, the blandness associated with everyday life. This comes to represent a profound psychological detachment from reality, a form of addictive compulsiveness towards more, more color, more engagement, more images, more videos, more content. AI art in reflecting ourselves is more engaging and interesting than another person's point of view, a real artist, who may have profound differences to our own view. This is the point of the narcissification of culture. It is better to look at our own reflected beliefs than to challenge those beliefs. It is better to stay in our own little silo, echo chamber, cave. AI art promises that soon every artistic or creative work we encounter will be personalized. Every ad, billboard, movie, TV show, novel, painting, nothing will be collectively shared and absolutely everything will be tailored to our own individualistic preference. In this filter babble, we succumb to the ultimate narcissification of our society,
community will die at the hands of personalized content. The consumer, drowning in the sea of content, will become addicted to the feeling of drowning and overwhelm and crave the sensation of mind obliteration. People will come to adore the technologies that undo their capacities to think, writes Neil Postman. But it's not so much thinking as quiet introspection that we now lack, the time and presence of mind to step back and ask, do I even want all this content being fed to me? Do I even want to be engaged at every incremental second of every day? The psychological effect of taking a step out of this is that of the wanderer emerging from the desert into the overwhelm of the city street. As Baudrillard writes, when you emerge from the desert, your eyes go on trying to create emptiness all around. In every inhabited area, every landscape, they see desert beneath, like a watermark. It takes a long time to get back to the normal vision of things, and you never succeed completely. Take this substance from my sight. AI art is heavily embraced by the corporate world for this reason. It allows content to proliferate over the challenging and unique pieces of work of art, and allows everything to become a sale. Content is celebrated by the corporate world because it offers no threat to corporate power. It is innovation without critique, invention without disruption, and art without the human soul. It may claim to provide political support for certain movements, feminism, decolonialism, and so on, but in reality it is only ever there to sell more product. In the future, Generative art will put viewers into their own TV shows. Viewers becoming the stars of their own TV shows they are watching will close the loop of the narcissistic fantasy, the self as a product to consume. <laughs>